Hey, hey, how's it going everybody? Jungle expert Ryan Flares Doyle back again to share with you all five quick tips for Kane. And before you dive straight into playing Kane after this video, make sure you use our desktop app to get the best builds and runes right now automatically imported into your game. You can also get tips, combos, matchup advice, and more info in a link down and below. So moving on to our first tip, we're going to go ahead and start with item interactions. So in order to use your ultimate as Kane, you need to have struck an enemy with an ability or an auto attack and choose a target to ult. However, items that deal damage to others will allow you to be able to ult them without even needing to land anything or get close enough to potentially get locked down and croak. First off, you have your blue smite, which I think a majority of players know of, so I won't go into too much detail. However, Bramble Vest or Thornmail is an awesome pickup, especially for those of you Ross players out there. Kane's very nature is to be up and close and personal, so it's guaranteed you'll be autoed by nearly everybody. Bramble or Thornmail reflects a bit of that damage and returns it back to the damage dealer, and it counts as if you damage them. So that means you can ult them at will without ever having to touch them. And for the record, if Kane gets a mini rework or a few changes here and there in the future, or if you're just playing Ultimate Bravery, items like Blade of the Ruin King, Gunblade, GLP, Protobelt for example work too, and it's something to keep in the back of your head. And before I move on to our next tip, I really want to put the information out there for all you Blue Cane enthusiasts that if you're going to play Blue Cane, if you're not going to be building mobility boots, pick up a pair of Sorcerer's Shoes instead. Blue Cane's passive is based on level and deals between 12 and 44% of your damage as bonus magic damage for the first 3 seconds of a fight. So by having those Sork Shoes, you're amplifying your damage, and by using your ultimate, your passive resets, giving you another 3 seconds to deal damage, which again converts some of the into bonus magic damage. Alright, so that brings us into our second tip for Kane, and that being clear speed increases. So, it's pretty common knowledge if you've ever picked up Kane before that his Q ability has two parts, the dash and the spin. It's also common knowledge that Kane is an incredible power farmer thanks to his AoE and his kit. But where people fail to take advantage of is that you can quicken the animation, then put the ability on cooldown much faster if you dash right into a wall. By doing this, you'll save seconds on top of seconds in your clear and put yourself in a better position to gank first or invade in a lot of situations. A lot of people also like to hold onto their E just to use it as some sustain, but you can also just use it to get from point A to point B much quicker because you'll ignore terrain and travel in a straight line, which is much quicker than having to path their own walls. It cuts your travel time in half, keeps you sustained in the process, and time adds up. One second faster or slower could mean the difference of a successful gank or not. And a lot of advanced cane strats all revolve around his E. It's just a powerful tool to travel and pull off unique gank angles. That being said, while your E is still active and you're outside of a wall, you can actually use your flash if you're feeling risky enough or your Q to get more distance and get closer to another wall before the ability falls off. So moving on to tip number three, we'll cover Kane's wall tricks. For our wall tricks, we'll be starting off easy and progressively get harder as we go on. The first trick ties back into clear speed increases as it helps you get from your red side to blue side or blue side to red side much quicker. All you're going to have to do is just E through these walls and be sure to run into the tower since it counts as terrain and walk into the walls to go from either side. Next up we'll start near the top lane which is awesome if you want to gank top lane or just avoid vision and invade the enemy's jungle. These are the easier walls to gap close, just keep in mind you'll need to really practice on how long you can keep your E on while outside of a wall. It needs to be become almost a gut instinct when it's about to expire and you need to be able to queue at the correct time, otherwise you'll just get stopped right in front of the terrain. For the first one you'll want to start around this tree here, make a straight line and queue into the wall so you clip into it and don't lose your E. And for the second one you'll want to start by hugging this wall here, make a straight line for the big wall of rock here and using your Q to clip into the wall and keep your E on. For our third wall trick, we're gonna be bumping up the difficulty to medium, and I'll show you all how you can cross through mid to set up for mid ganks, or again, just avoid vision and invade the enemy jungler. So you can do this on either side of the mid river brush, but ideally you wanna start in the middle of the wall here, so that you can run a straight line through this brush, and again, using your Q to extend the range of your E and clip into the wall, making it to the other side. So for our next wall trick, we'll bump up the difficulty again, and we'll start from the dragon pit cross the river, and end up on the other side of the map. This one is good for ganking bot lane, or just, again, invading the enemy jungler or avoiding vision. You're going to be wanting to start around this tree area here, and path to these lily pads on the ground here. Afterward, you'll need to go to an angle and queue into this rock sticking out to where you'll clip into the wall. 
An alternative pathing path is to start right behind the pit here and go into a straight line to the wall using your Q to clip into the wall again and from there can access the enemy jungler or go gank bot lane. As for some other wall tricks, this one's kind of simple, pathing through walls to avoid wards. This one, again, simple and very handy at the same time. A lot of the times players put out the same wards in the same spots over and over on default. By using this knowledge, we can actually path through walls with our Q or E and avoid vision and use the enemy laner's false sense of security against them and and gank them from unique angles to secure more kills for your team. Also, while you're using your E and you're in a wall, they may see the indicator that you're coming thanks to the dot on the screen. However, this doesn't mean they necessarily see you. They have to have vision of you in order to see you. So if you're keeping a good distance, they won't be able to tell what angle you plan on coming from. Just that you are near and about to strike, which gives you the advantage of surprise. Which leads me to my next point that you can actually use your abilities while you're in the wall, even your flash. Q works, but is really only useful when you're in your timer is about to run out and you need to be spat out on a different side of the terrain. Your W, however, can be used in the wall for free damage. And it's awesome to do that because sometimes you'll get that Phantom W, which ties back to what I previously said. If they don't have vision of you in a wall, they don't see you, which means they will not see the W. So by casting your W, they cannot see your ability outline. And if they do happen to have vision of you, sometimes they cannot even attack you because most abilities in the game don't travel through walls. So they'll need to be able to be close enough to auto you or use ability like a Thrush Hooker, Blitz Hooker, maybe a Karma. And if that's the case, that means you are close enough to dish out a lot of follow-up damage in the form of your auto QR if need be. Are the supports not warding for you? Is the enemy team doing an objective or baiting you into walking into a death rush? Never fear because your E allows for you to gain vision of an area while in the safety of a wall and if there actually is somebody, you'll have a little dot at the edge of the wall to indicate somebody is there lying in wait to pick you off. Moving on to tip and trick number four, we're going to be moving to ult functionalities and the few different ways Kane can use his ultimate to outplay his opponents. So the first one is rather simple, much like Azania's buying time for your abilities to come back up to make an escape or potential outplay. Your ultimate is pretty much the same thing. You can use your R to dodge abilities that would otherwise kill you or lock you down and be killed shortly thereafter. And while you're inside, you cannot be harmed by anybody or anything except damage over time abilities like Ignite or Acacia Poison or anything of that nature. So this gives you a few seconds of breathing room to either allow your team to catch up, to help you out, reposition when you exit, or buy time for your cooldown so that you can escape or outplay, which is even better for being an insane smite stealer. Which brings me to my next trick, and it's probably my personal favorite to be honest. You can actually use your smite to steal dragons, rift heralds, or barons while you are inside somebody when you use your ultimate. Meaning if you miss time a smite steal or just go into the pit early, you can just ult somebody and smite steal as long as you're in range while being completely unharmed in the process. If you really think about it, you only have two ways to get into the pit, Q over the wall or E through the wall. If you don't have a ward and need vision, you can E into the wall and check, or if that's on cooldown, you can just use your W to check if they've started Baron or not. And Kane is actually one of the best champions at giving you the chance to steal Baron or just other objectives in general, even if he doesn't have the best ways to outsmite. And lastly, what should you be running in your games? For our tip number five, Kane is the only champion in the game that has the option to choose their playstyle depending on the game state. So with that, it's really important to have your game plan ready from champion select. So when it comes to your abilities, be sure to place only three points into your Q as its damage doesn't scale with it and you're only really putting points into it for the reduced cooldown, which is good for early clearing, but not so much for damage. After level six, be sure to max your W as it's the most important damaging ability for Kane. It's often the ability players lead off with in fights or ganks. It's the biggest damage ability for blue cane and for red cane having those game changing knockups is crucial to winning fights. And after you finished maxing your W, finish those last two points in your Q and then E. And as a little added bonus to the video, I thought I'd include this bug or trick with his transformation. I think it's a bug or maybe it's just intended since it's been around since his release, but you can actually transform his cane off of the platform. So when you do transform, you do get your home guards effect and by transforming off of the platform, you can increase your efficiency of rotating to where you need to be sooner, whether that means ganking or just clearing your jump. And thank you all so much for watching this five tips and tricks for Kane video. I sincerely hope you liked it and came away learning something new out of this. If I missed anything, be sure to let me know down below in the comments and call me out on it. But be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content like this video in the future, as well as head over to mobilelytics.gg for the best way possible to improve in your rank games. As always, I've been your host, Ryan Flares Doyle. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Be safe out there. Remember that you matter and good luck out there, Summoner.